Hi there. Welcome to uh, our panel on content improvement campaigns on Wikipedia, which is part of Open Publishing Fest. I'm Sheldon Rampton, and our panelists today are Stephen Laporte, Pete Forsyth, and Sherry Antoine. And uh, I'll give you a brief introduction of each person, and then we'll, we'll proceed. Uh, Pete Forsyth is with Wiki Strategies and is engaged in a current project called News on Wiki, which is a campaign oriented around improving Wiki content specific to uh, newspapers uh, and ensuring that those campaigns, are, that that information is, is more available uh, in Google search results. Uh, I'll let him talk about that in detail. Uh, Sherry Antoine uh, is the Program Development and Outreach Strategist and Executive Director with Afro Free Culture Crowdsourcing Wikimedia, also known as Afro Crowd, uh, is also the lead organizer of Wikimedians of the Caribbean User Group and wears a few other hats as well. And her project is called the Wiki Global Check-in, Check excuse me, which is a chance for people to uh, collect snapshots of life from throughout the world during the historical moment that we're all witnessing with, with the uh, coronavirus situation. And then finally, Stephen Laporte uh, is the creator of PaceTrack, which is a project tracking tool designed to make it easier for Wikipedia editing campaigns to track their progress. Uh, I'm Sheldon Rampton, I'm the moderator. Uh, my background is that in the 1990s, I uh, created, was it, excuse me, not 1990s, in 2003, I created a, a, a wiki using the Wikipedia software, but unaffiliated with the Wikipedia, Wikimedia Foundation called SourceWatch, that was intended to serve as a, an information source with information about uh, pundits and politicians and other people who are uh, at trying to influence public opinion and public policy. Uh, and I've been a big fan of Wikipedia and other Wikimedia projects over the years, so I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to talk with some people who are currently active in doing that. So why don't we start with Pete Forsyth. Can you tell us more about Wiki Strategies and what you're doing with News on Wiki? Sure. Uh, so Wiki Strategies is my Wikipedia training and consulting agency. Uh, we do a variety of projects uh, and the News on Wiki is, it's actually maybe not the most typical, but it is uh, probably the one I'm most passionate about these days. Uh, this is, this is a campaign that was originally thought of by my colleague, Mike Caulfield, uh, who many of you may know from Twitter. He's very active uh, and well-respected on Twitter, uh, spe specifically in the area of misinformation on the internet. And, uh, and the original problem that Mike saw in designing this project was that increasingly, we're all encountering news sources and, and just sources in general on the internet and through social media that we have never heard of before. And we have no idea whether they're real or fake, um, whether they have an established reputation, whether it's a positive or negative reputation, just very basic information about what is it that we're, we're reading. And um, through some research from some of our colleagues at uh, specifically at Wellesley College, uh, put out a couple of papers that really draw a very clear causal connection between Wikipedia content and the knowledge panels that you see on Google search results uh, and other web and web search engine search results. So imagine that you live in Cleveland and you see a story posted on Facebook or Twitter that's from the Denver Gazette. You've never been to Denver. You have no idea whether the Denver Gazette is a newspaper that was first founded in 1872 and it has five Pulitzer Awards and it has had a consistent editorial board or whether it was just a website that someone registered last month only to promote one fake news story. So to figure that out, the first thing you're probably going to do is you're going to do a Google search. And if there's a Wikipedia article about the Denver Gazette, then Google will have a, a knowledge panel that presents that information when it was founded, who its owner was, you know, some of the basic information about it. So, you know, the basic idea of the news on wiki campaign is can we take the 
finite number of newspapers in the United States and make a significant impact on how many of them have basic coverage on Wikipedia. This particular campaign is really not about writing beautiful, well-crafted, high-quality articles that cover every detail of a newspaper. We're trying to get articles about a lot of newspapers that get reliable, basic information about each one. And some of those will grow over time uh, just through the way that Wikipedia naturally works. People will continue to work on them and they will become excellent articles, but not all will, and that's not really our focus. Um, so we did, uh, we did an initial round of this uh, in 2018. Uh, that was the, the, the round that was launched by Mike uh, through a, a generous uh, donation from Paul and Susan Haar, who sponsored a, They basically had a bounty for every article that was created that matched our criteria. They made a charitable donation. And so that was a part of what that, that was really the only funding that was applied in the, in the initial round. And through that, we attracted people at universities and existing Wikipedians and new Wikipedians, a bunch of different kinds of people to do this work and we came up with several hundred new articles and improved articles about newspapers. Um, our campaign is different than some in the sense that we are very literally focused on the content. We are not measuring our success according to how many new Wikipedia editors are we attracting or something like that. Of course, that's something that we'd like to do, but that's not you know, our central purpose. And, uh, and that's really had an, had an impact on kind of the way that we structured the project uh, which I think is going to tie in pretty well with uh, with our other panelists here. So okay. I think that's enough for, for my basic intro. Okay, so uh, why don't we go next to Sherry and you can tell us more about in your, uh, your, your project, the Wiki Global Check-In. Uh, can you explain how that works? So the Wiki Global Check-In, and thanks so much for uh, inviting us today. Uh, the Wiki Global Check-In um, came about as an idea um, to connect people uh, in the Wiki community all over the world through a 24 hour edit a fun. And um, as far as we do, it hadn't been tried before, thought it would be a good idea. And this was pre pandemic. So thinking, oh, it'd be great to have something like this. Then the pandemic hit. Um, and um, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was time to reconnect with everyone. So um, I gathered together with some people from Wikimedia Sweden, like Eric Luth and Netta Hussain, who's also been involved in a lot of the um, editing uh, on Wikipedia on uh, COVID-19, as well as um, some people from the foundation, Alex Stinson, for example. And um, we uh, came with the idea to um, go from uh, as far as New Zealand all the way to, if we can get there, Hawaii, and have um, have everyone in the community check in during this strange time about what it is like for them during this time, during this pandemic. Um, so many of us have been isolated. So many of us have been separated from our normal routines and from the people that we know. But for us um, Wikipedians, we already have an online community um, that, um, you know, something like this would allow us to not only check in with each other and how we, we are all doing, but also with the world around us, because that's what we do. We document the world around us. So this um, wiki check-in um, asks uh, people in the wiki community and elsewhere to come by, say hello in your language, leave a greeting in your language, but also leave an image that um, will rep help represent to the world what this time was like in your part of the world. So we want as many perspectives as possible, as many languages as possible. And um, the, the response was overwhelming. Um, in, the, in that 24 hour period on May 16th when we started, um, we asked people to start editing, um, start sending their messages, their images, and also participating in our, on our, in our uh, COVID-19 edit-a-thon um, at noon in their time zone. So we followed the sun from New Zealand, we followed it all the way through Europe, through Africa, through the Caribbean, through the United States, and I think at last check-in that um, uh, California was the last uh, farthest to respond. We'd still love to hear from Hawaii <laughs> and further out, but this is where we are. 
And because of the response, we've decided to extend the check-in for 100 days. So now instead of being just a 24-hour edit-a-thon, which by the way went really well, um, it's gonna be a project that extends until August 22nd. And we're hoping that it'll be like a time capsule for the world and, and uh, uh, for history about these times and um, what it was like for all of us who, who are living through it. Yeah, and of course that's going to change as, as the pandemic continues to unfold. Yes. Uh, yes. One of the things I think reason why we wanted 100 days, because we want it to be a snapshot of this time. Um, mm -hmm. We don't expect to um, collect all the experiences, but almost like, like you would for a, a time capsule. I don't know if you did one of those when you were a kid. You take a time capsule of your time, something that represents your current um, situation and the world you know, you put it in a bottle and you bury it. And then hopefully, 50 years from now, someone will open that bottle and we'll get a hint of, of what your, your life and your experience of the world around you was like during that brief period of time um, uh, where you collected those things and put it in it. So it's, it's really more like a, a digital time capsule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, Sherry, I was thinking I'm going to um, pull up some of the photos and maybe I'll do them by a screen share just as we're talking so people can get a flavor of kind of what the... It's a great idea. Like. It's a wonderful well, idea. One of the things that I think is interesting about your project, a lot of people, of course, are familiar with uh, Wikipedia, which is the flagship project of the Wikimedia Foundation. But what you're doing is really not Wikipedia articles. And, and it, you're not creating encyclopedia articles. You're, you're capturing snapshots of people's lives in a way that you really couldn't do in an encyclopedia. And I think that's really, really fascinating because it, it, it demonstrates the diversity of approaches that that exist for collaboratively creating and sharing information. Um, I, I also want to uh, mention that um, Brandon Sullivan, who leads communications, uh, pro like, you know, leads our, our communications projects with Wiki Caribbean, um, has gone uh, broken that other wall, and um, we've put some of the images and the progress so far. Um, oh, this is perfect timing, Pete. Um, so we've taken some of these images and we've put them into a video, which is about 10 seconds long, that we've played throughout social media and, and we plan to post a few on the page, on the wiki check-in page as well. And it just shows you the wealth of information, um, wealth of images that have come in in just a short period of time. And um, so, we live in a time, oh, that's one of my favorites, the toilet paper, <laughs> that's one of my favorite ones. <laughs> the sacred toilet paper, behold, I have one. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so, so it, we live in a time where, um, unlike 1918, which was, um, it's often called the Spanish flu um, of 1918, we live in a time where we can connect to each other digitally and in many different platforms. And what the Wiki community is really, really good at um, that I found is using the creativity and innovation that seems to be a wealth in, in, and in abundance in this global community to come up with different ways of capturing information. Um, thankfully, we have social media so we can share in that way as well, and the wiki community is very active on social media as well. But also, you know, we have wiki commons, which collects data um, through images and audio visual. There are some videos that have come in, um, and the wiki check-in has a wiki commons online campaign. So if you scroll down on the page, um, I don't know if after this, um, we could take a look at the website um, uh, on Meta, but um, you, you can be a part of an ongoing um, Wiki Commons campaign called Wiki Check-In that allows you to um, continue sending as many images and pictures as you'd like. Um, on the page, we're asking for maybe one, two, maybe three images per person, but through the campaign, you can, I, I know someone in Puerto Rico, Maria, who's sent so many great images from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico has gone through many different things, earthquakes, they have the hurricane, and now they're dealing with the pandemic. Their perspective on this time must be fascinating. And, and already, um, 
it really has been. Oh, great. Now you can take a look at the, the site. So this is the wiki check-in page. It's really easy to find on wikimedia.org. Um, literally, it's meta.wikimedia.org forward slash wiki forward slash check-in uh, with a cap of C and cap of I. So check-in, literally that. And the global wiki check-in um, is also um, uh, using open street maps to kind of give you um, a good look at where we've been. Pete, would you mind clicking on that map? Okay, so um, as we go, people have been adding their, um, their dots that represent where they're from. Uh, if we can zoom out, if you go all the way out to see the whole world, you'll see where we all have been. And that just represents some of the images that have come in because there's some, there's sort of a lag between um, the people who have uh, participated in the effort and the, um, uh, and you know, uh, we're, we're doing it manually. So people, some people will put a dot for themselves or someone from the wiki check-in team will do it. But I think this is a good representation. And most of these came in during that 24 hour edit-a-thon I was telling you about. And um, as you can see, we have, as far as New Zealand, thank you so much guys for participating. Australia, we've got some people um, throughout Asia. Uh, we've got people in Africa, though we're still waiting for you, South Africa. I know you're you're thinking about it. I spoke to a few people. And um, and you can see Europe, South America. Interesting to see Brazil and um, Uruguay and, and that part of, of South America representing, because right now they're experiencing it the most in the world. Um, formerly, it was my neighborhood in New York City that was... Um, really, I mean, I literally live next door to a hospital. So every night at 7 p.m., we hear um, people clanging their their cups and pats, uh, pots and pans. I have a little drum djembe that I play out the window, and people are cheering for the nurses and and the doctors and and the other um, uh, essential workers as they're changing their shifts. And I recorded that, and I'm adding it to the campaign. But it's things like this that you know is really going to be something when we look back on this time um, will be um, one of the things that we remember. So um, we rarely ever talk about the pandemic of 1918. Actually, I don't think many people remembered that it ever happened. Can you imagine the world forgetting that this ever happened? So um, I think a project like this allows us to have an outlet to share um, to commiserate with um, other people in different parts of the world, especially other people within our same um, wiki community, I, I think is also um, another experience that is hard to find. And I hope that it'll allow people to express themselves, but also to collect very um, useful information about the history that we're literally living in right now. For future generations. Yeah, I want to ask you more about that, but I, why don't we go on first and 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 introduce Stephen. So uh, Stephen Laporte um, is working on a, a project to help with um, wiki campaigns and to help them track information uh, towards uh, and, and progress towards the the goal that they're trying to accomplish. Uh, why don't you go ahead and and talk about that project, Stephen? Ah, thank you. Um, my name is Stephen Laporte, and uh, as you mentioned, the project that I'm working on is called PaceTrack. Um, and PaceTrack is an open source software tool to help people organize online editing campaigns around Wikipedia. Um, I worked on PaceTrack as a hackathon project with a buddy, uh, Mahmoud Hashemi, that I've worked on a number of other uh, Wikipedia uh, tools and, and visualizations uh, with. Um, but PaceTrack's goal was, uh, as I mentioned before, to try and help campaign organizers uh, measure the progress of the campaigns that they're running online. And we really built PaceTrack around two 
design ideas. The first is if you give people a like a thermometer or a, a progress bar, it helps them sort of organize their efforts in a common direction. So when you have a list of things you're trying to accomplish, you can kind of uh, organize your editing efforts around that list. And the second idea was creating a space for campaigns on Wikipedia that's different than edit-a-thons or wiki projects. So edit-a-thons are a common practice on one hand. They're really useful, a uh, great way to get people focused on a you know, very concrete call to action, but they're usually time limited and they're often in person. On the other hand, wiki projects on Wikipedia um, are pages with a really broad scope uh, that you can find at any time and join. But on the flip side, they're, they're never really complete. So in between this idea of edit-a-thons and wiki projects is the idea of just a campaign that you're running, similar to the one that Pete mentioned earlier. And uh, we built PaceTrack as just a, a really simple tool uh, to uh, help measure the progress of how those campaigns work. Now, PaceTrack is still a work in progress. So uh, if you're curious to see how it works or if you're interested in contributing any code to it, it's it's open source and it's all up on GitHub. Um, and I, you know, I'm happy to talk more with the, the campaign organizers on this panel about uh, what kind of tools they need to run a campaign successfully. Yeah, now one of the things that a lot of people know about Wikipedia is that it's an encyclopedia edited by human volunteers, the encyclopedia that anyone can edit. Uh, but I don't think everyone is as familiar with the fact that there's a lot of structured information in Wikipedia articles, such as info boxes, which can, for example, for a human being, it would contain the person's name, their date of birth, and, uh, and likewise for, for a newspaper, an info box would contain the perhaps the, the, the date when the, the newspaper was founded, the, its circulation, and other sort of standard pieces of information about newspapers. And that's the sort of information, when it's in, in an info box in a structured form, it, it becomes something that Google's uh, search tools can, can extract from articles to enrich their search results. And, and, and one of the things that I noticed about your tool is that it lets is it that lets people see whether an article has an info box and and some of the information and that's in the article and the stru that's 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 is structured information uh, could you talk a little bit about that yeah the the idea is when you're running a campaign when you set it up you specify the the facets of the article the the aspects of the article that you want to measure. So things like, does it exist on Wikipedia? Does it have an info box? Is it in the right wiki project? Uh, does it have just a good minimum number of citations? And if you, if you specify that, and then you specify a list of articles, PaceTrack will give you a breakdown of how far you are to meeting your goal of getting 100% coverage. So if you wanted to have an info box for every newspaper in the US, um, Pace track as a way to, to to measure your progress towards that goal. Yeah, and I, I see uh, that I think Pete has put up a, a a page showing a Google search result for a publication called The New Era, and you can see that that information includes uh, a breakout showing when it was founded and its circulation, and yeah. that information appears in that little search result not because Google Google's uh, search engine is is super brilliant although it, they do have smart programmers it, it it exists because they're able to extract it because that information is being put into wikipedia in a structured consistent way so yeah and that's really that was kind of the the core uh like i said that was sort of the 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 the, the core concept that that launched the news on wiki campaign um so uh, Annie Mustafari is a uh, professor at Wellesley College, and she and several several of her students published uh, several papers on this topic, where they drew. And I think this is something if you're if you're familiar with how the internet works, this is probably not a big surprise to you. But you know, their research reveal, revealed in a very provable way that there's a very direct link. So the reason that this panel exists in the upper right on a Google res, Google search result is because. On a Wikipedia article, this info box exists. Um, so that's that's how it works currently. 
in the future, it might, there are other ways that, that Wiki stores structured data. And the main way is a new site that's it's a sister site to Wikipedia called Wikidata, um, which is collecting a lot of the same kind of information. And as things go forward, it's, it's, very, it's almost certain that, um, that Google will be drawing that information more from Wikidata. So we're both ensuring that Wikipedia articles contain an info box and also adding that information to Wikidata so that it's both having an effect now and that it'll likely continue to have that effect into the future. Uh, the reason that I pulled this one up as an example is because this newspaper, it really is from a very, it's from a small, it's a small newspaper in a small town. Uh, this is, uh, is actually an article that I wrote as part of the first phase of our campaign. Uh, so it didn't exist on Wikipedia before. And of course the new era, the other thing about it is the new era is a fairly common phrase. So if you notice, all I did was type into Google the new era. I didn't say that I wanted a newspaper. I didn't say that it had to be in Oregon. But because that Wikipedia article exists and has an info box, and I guess none of these other things that have to do with the new era do, it pulled it right up and it's right there on the first Google result that you, the page that you see. Um, so, you know, but it's only, it's a, it's, it, it only has a circulation of about 1600 uh, it's, you know, it's not an enormous newspaper, but it has been around for a while. It's been around since 1929. And so just by getting this one sentence and these couple of key facts, it's been around for almost a hundred years, you know, and it's, and it's got a circulation that was, you know, whether or not it's enormous, it was sort of rely, it was, it was considered significant enough to be recorded on Wikipedia. And so these are the kinds of things that might help someone get a, get some confidence that this is what they'd consider a real newspaper and not just some fly-by-night thing that was created to, uh, to advance the story. One of the things that has impressed me the most about Wikipedia and the Wikimedia Foundation over the years has been the inclusiveness that it has striven for, <laughs> strived for. Um, it, and, and I think each of you is working towards that in various ways. For example, including a very small newspaper in a small town. And Sherry, when you were talking earlier about, about the, the differences in experience that people are having around the world, it got me thinking about the differences we're having with, with the coronavirus situation here in the United States, where in places like New York, where you live, and my brother also lives, I, I, I know firsthand stories of of people dying uh, that are very immediate and personal and heartfelt. And on the other hand, in rural communities and where there are other people I know, <laughs> people have not really been touched by it yet and are therefore less likely to see it as a serious problem. And, that, and we're living through a, what I think is going to become one of the most dramatic years or couple of years of my lifetime and people are experiencing it very differently. And I, th I think that's, that's one of the things that I find fascinating about, about what you're doing with, with, with the Wiki Global check-in. I, I read a recent estimate that said that uh, something like 60 million people throughout the world, I think this came from the, the United Nations, uh, are 60 million people are likely to be pushed back into extreme poverty by COVID-19 due to disruption of economies and supply chains and things like that. And living here in the United States, most of what I hear people talking about are the economic and health impacts in our own country, which are certainly significant. And it's no surprise that people are talking about them. But I, I keep wondering what we can do to make this a truly global com conversation, because I think those people who are going to be suffering extreme poverty or suffering the impacts of disease in places like Africa and India are, are at risk as much and, and more at risk with fewer resources than people here. And, and, I, and I hope that what you're doing and what, Wiki, what the Wikimedia, Wikimedia Foundation and Wikipedia are doing can help contribute to a reprioritization of all of that and an understanding of, of that we are a global community and number one, we don't overcome this virus in one country and we can't ignore the experiences of others. I wonder if you can talk about that at all, Sherry. Sure, I, um, uh, thank you for that wonderful question, by the way. Um, 
yeah, this, uh, the, the crisis is hitting, um, it's hitting the world um, almost uh, person by person differently. Each person has their own experience. Um, I'm actually, it just so happens working on another project with a group um, also uh, connected with Wikimedia Sweden, um, with the UNFPA and a few other groups, uh, focused on some of the issues that may um, kind of be overlooked um, with our intense focus on, um, on, on the pandemic, that during the pandemic, people are not only experiencing um, uh, the illness of COVID-19, but the byproducts of um, the response to it, the byproducts of having family members who are sick, the byproducts of, of that, and that includes um, domestic violence uh, for both uh, um, you know, people in relationships as well as children, um, dealing with um, issues of being able to access um, health care for, for different reasons, not just for COVID, um, mental health issues. Um, people are dealing with um, not only the loss of jobs uh, and livelihoods, but the loss of entire, um, you know, uh, futures, you know, um, family members sick. If you have more than one family member sick, what is going to happen with the, chi uh, with the children in the home? Um, people, if you if if people lose their jobs and 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 a lot of of the trajectory seems to be even worse than maybe uh, the Great Depression it had been for uh, the world. So, um, and again, mental health is a big part of it. You know, isolation. How does months of isolation? How do how does it affect people? How does it affect entire communities? Um, not being sure about their future. So there's just so many issues. Um, um, beyond just the illness itself um, that are, are, are re people are facing in these times. And um, when you go to the wiki check-in, um, we, we tell people to leave a greeting, a positive greeting, right? One of the things that, um, that we found and we weren't expecting, um, oh, and I have to give a shout out to Camille Bobin of Wikidon. She's in Italy and she actually helped run um, um, an editathon for the check-in and uh, gave some great uh, entries as well. But one thing she brought up was, you know, it's good to ask people how they're doing, you know? Um, in, in many ways, our world is already an isolated one. But when things like this happen, where people are literally dealing with life and death decisions, where going outside your door is a life or death decision, you know, wearing masks, things like that, you know, um, you can feel very alone. And even if you're with your whole family, you can feel very alone and isolated in this weird situation. So something about the check-in is literally, it is a check-in. You're showing, you're telling people kind of like, you know, when there's a hurricane or an earthquake or some other kind of, of um, <clears throat> you, you know, event that separates people. Like my family did uh, for for our family in the Caribbean, when there was a, a huge hurricane, Maria, um, a, a little while back, is you connect with, with people by saying, I'm here, you know? Just saying I'm here is basically telling the world, okay, I'm fine, uh, you know, I'm here. And it also, by you checking in with others and others checking in with you, it's almost a way of saying, you know, um, your presence matters. So I don't want to go too deep into it because it, it really isn't meant to be this ooey gooey kind of thing. Well, can but I, um, in a way, oh, go ahead. I, yeah, well, that's, uh, that touches on something I wanted to ask you about, Sherry. Um, it, you know, from my years in, in, in working in the Wikimedia world, I have, you know, I've noticed that there are, there are people who really gravitate towards and have really embraced social media as because social media is something that's really grown up in the wake of Wikipedia, right? When Wikipedia started in 2001, we didn't even have Friendster, much less MySpace, much less Facebook, much less, you know, all these others, right? There wasn't, I don't know if people really remember that, but Wikipedia was really there first. And I think as social media has developed, some Wikipedians really gravitate towards it and embrace it and use it as a way to talk about Wikipedia, to talk about their work on Wikipedia, to recruit editors, to, you know, 
promote the availability of information and stuff like that. And others have no interest whatsoever. They're maybe just more introverted people. Uh, maybe they have concerns about the privacy of sites that are run by corporate, you know, uh, entities that might not have their best interest at heart. There might be a number of different reasons, but some just have really no interest in Wikipedia and in, in social media at all. And one of the things that really grabbed me about the Wiki check-in is that it's drawing out some of those people, right? They're like, some of them are familiar faces from my Twitter feed and things like that. And some of them are Wikipedians that maybe I met at a conference somewhere, or maybe I've seen, you know, working on an article or something like that. But if they're on social media at all, I don't know about it. They're not very public about it. So what it, like, what to you is sort of the, I mean, I think you were just kind of starting to talk about that value, but it's just, it, it, I find it very warming just to see like, oh, here's someone who like, just because they only edit factual information on medical articles or on articles about turtles or whatever their interest is, they're a, you know, they're a multidimensional person and there's, that's what it looks yeah. like outside their window. I wouldn't get to see that otherwise. Yeah. 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 And I also think, you know, um, I think what what it is is that yeah we're multifaceted people every human being is is more complicated than the two-dimensional image you see of them um whether it's uh through what they edit online or through what they say on social media so um I think this inadvertently um especially since it was a word um the way that we advertise it was primarily um by word of mouth we used um something um a feature called ping, you ping somebody else. Um, so what you do is you put in your username and then you put in like the usernames of three other people that you think um, would either be interested in this or benefit from this uh, in the Wiki community. So um, what we usually do during Wikimania, which is the annual event of Wikipedia enthusiasts and Wiki enthusiasts is that, or, or any of the other conferences that we hold, is that you have people from different regions, different parts of the world come together and meet each other in, in a room here, there, a session here, a panel discussion there. But this year we didn't have that. So in a way, the wiki checking kind of um, repeats that, but on, online. And it's, you know, we're all coming from our different corners of the world um, because we're, we're all have this one thing in common. And that one thing in common is that um, it's Wikipedia or, or the wiki community in general. So in that way, you have people who may not normally be as active being invited by friends, being invited by people who, who already connect with them with that one thing. And so it feels a little bit more, I think, in a way open or, or in a way safer um, to share within that community then let's say it would normally be to just share with the world on social media. So I think, I think that word of mouth, we did work with influencers and so forth, and we did have um, campaigns on social media and different networks, but I think that um, person to person uh, word of mouth uh, effect really helped it to be um, <clears throat> a more, uh, just help, help it to generate more, more people really um, being engaged in, in, in what was happening, yeah. I hope. Well, one thing that I think all three of you are doing in different ways is addressing issues of community and trust and respect that to me is, has been one of the things I've come to appreciate the most about Wikipedia. I mean, the, the, the encyclopedia and all that is, is a great resource. And that was what initially attracted me to the project. When I did, I first, when I first heard of it, I had the reaction I think most people have, which is, it's crazy to think you can just let anyone edit. How's that ever gonna work? And then it, I discovered that it worked. But, but, the, I, but a big part of the reason it works is because the community has established policies and practices around rules of evidence, around, around civility, around, around uh, a neutral point of view. And, 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 it, and it's created a type of community that is different, I think, from some of the communities you find on the internet. I've, I've been part of, of discussions by media critics who are very concerned about toxic discourse on, on the internet. And you have, you know, everything from neo-Nazi groups to 
doxing and Reddit and some fairly toxic discourse that happens on on places like Twitter and Facebook. And and there is, of course, uh, toxic discourse sometimes in Wikipedia. I've seen some blowout arguments, but by and large, I think Wikipedia tends towards the trustworthy, reliable, uh, evidence-based side of things and towards the side of things that respects diverse points of view much more than a lot of other uh, forms of discourse that we see on the internet. We, we just had uh, uh, the uh, Zuckerberg at, at, uh, on Facebook say that, that they shouldn't be responsible for fact-checking their content and the following day people were posting little memes about about Zuckerberg who died yesterday said you know just to make fun of the, the idea that you wouldn't want to fact check things on Wikipedia things are fact checked and and that's what you're doing Pete with 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 your project you're ensuring that people have a way to access information that will tell them whether they're getting fake news or reliable news and in a in a similar fashion or in a related fashion, I think, Sherry, you're doing something to enable people to see the, the actual lived experiences of people who are outside their own. And, and I think that's incredibly valuable at this moment when we have people uh, in the United States so divided over the question of whether this virus is even real that people are having arguments in supermarkets. And, uh, and it's, it's always fascinating. I'm coming to a question here. Uh, it, it's always uh, fascinated me that Wikipedia has been that successful at at establishing that kind of a community, and and I just wonder if you guys have thoughts about what it is that makes that work. Um, well, one thing is it it is an open community, you know, and I think open open source attracts certain people who. Um, have certain feelings about in information. I think that's number one in my mind. Um, we do have our issues, you know, um, uh, just like the in, there is in the world, there are issues with, um, like, for example, knowledge equity on, on Wikipedia. But something that you find in the community is that there are people who are dedicating, literally dedicating hours and hours of time to fix that particular issue. Um, Africrat and is one wiki caribbean is another um women in red i'd like to um they're they're one of the and people that was that we, we had a related panel yesterday which uh that, and that recording will be online where we had rosie stevenson good night from that yeah Lizzie. Sorry, to, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah rosie has been uh, a trailblazer in that yeah. um there are other groups that have come out of of, of her efforts to uh, amplify women uh, who are don't have a presence on on wikipedia um and other wiki sites like uh, uh, I, I think there's one called Ni uh, Wiki for Nigel Women. That's a new one that's uh, very, I think gets inspiration from Women in Red. Um, and one of our partners, um, Who's Knowledge, they're very active in um, um, <clears throat> amplifying the voices of marginalized communities. Now this is all you know neutral information, but the point is is that we want the information to be there. Um, if you if you are missing What's a good What's a good way to put it? If it's history, okay, the word history. A lot of people feel that um, you know. What about her story? <laughs> you know, or what about the the story of, of of people in the LGBTQ community? Or what about the story of people in indigenous communities? Or um, uh, and what about um, information that's locked away behind um, you know? Um, behind the Met's walls, you know? Wouldn't it be great to have access to that information? So information itself, I think, reflects the, our societies and our different perspectives. And if we have information from as many sources as possible, um, for example, a lot of newspapers that aren't, um, that, you know, there, there are so many newspapers in the world that have contributed to our knowledge of the world. And wouldn't it be great to um, be able to access the knowledge from those sources more? Um, you've got so many, so many um, wonderful areas that we can pull from. So it's great to have a community that sees um, 
values that information and wants to access it and is interested and curious about the world enough to want to reach out and grab that information mm -hmm. for the rest of the day. Can I, can I, um, I'm, you know, I'm interested, Stephen, uh, the, well, just to, to kind of follow on what you're talking about there, Sherry, one of the, um, one of the points that, that Rosie brought up in our panel yesterday about the women in red campaign, which is a campaign to get, uh, women who, uh, are deserving of a Wikipedia article, but don't have one yet to get to get an article written. Um, you know, when I asked her what the one thing that, you know, what sort of the main thing that's allowed them to be successful with that, the first thing that she said was, well, it's when we started generating lists, right? Like we put out the broad call to like, let's write articles about women, but it was really when they started making lists of like, here are the women in medicine that don't have a Wikipedia article. Here are the women musicians that don't have a Wikipedia article. And giving people a list, it might not be complete, but if you give people a list of 100 or 200 people in a certain category, it gives them something to grab onto. And, you know, that, that makes me think, Stephen, about, like, can you talk about, um, you know, I think both, like, what, like you, you chose to make this project, Pacetrack, an open source project. You know, we're here as part of the Open Publishing Festival. So how does, like, the openness of the data and the openness of the code, how does that inter interact with the kind of values that we're talking about here? And are there projects similar to yours that do things like helping generate lists and, and, and supporting campaigns in other ways? Yeah, the, the, the main project I think about when I think about the value of lists in the Wikipedia universe is Wiki Loves Monuments, which is a project that has been running, I think since 2010. Um, 2010, 2011, it started, and it, it actually holds the Guinness Book of World Records for the world's largest community-driven photography competition. And the idea there is you take the list of monuments in every country and you just give it to photographers and they go out and take pictures and upload them to Wikipedia. And there's a really, uh, I think just a really human impulse to try and complete a list. And when people get a list in front of them, they start uh, you yeah, know, making... Yeah, and I, I, I think you got to harness that natural impulse for good rather than for evil and, uh, you know, have some conversations about which lists we're using, uh, which lists we choose and how we, we use them for, uh, for, proper, for a proper purpose. But I, I also think it's important to keep in mind that, you know, Wikipedia, Wikimedia is, is not just a website. It's not just a like social media platform. It's, it's a group of people and these people get together and they have coffee together and they have beers together and they work on things together and I think that some of the the coolest collaborations in the Wikimedia space in my mind have always been the things that take the stuff they're doing on the computer and also move it offline like the art and feminism edit-a-thons are fantastic yeah. they're a bunch of fun um, so I, I I really like that aspect of of Wikimedia, and I think that kind of distinguishes Wikipedia from many other websites that people visit. One thing we did, um, uh, if I can uh, mention something from Wiki Caribbean community, um, we did that um, was I think really fun was um, after uh, after uh, we presented it at um, Wiki Conference North America. Um, Andrew Lee, who's been sort of another trailblazer in the Wiki community, he's uh, authored a book on Wikipedia. Um, he is basically uh, a member of Wiki Caribbean now. Um, he happened to be in um, the Caribbean. I think he was in Puerto Rico. And he said, hey, I'm going to Puerto Rico. Is there anyone I can train? What? <laughs> so we said, Andrew, he's also a uh, Fuzz, Fuzzito on um, on Twitter, uh, Fuzzhead. Oh, I think it is. Um, Andrew, you're going. You're offering free training. What? To, so we jumped at it. We had about a week to plan, and we, amongst uh, uh, ourselves and our, our context in the Caribbean and extra, et cetera, we were able to connect during Thanksgiving week, and they celebrated in in Puerto Rico too. We were able to connect with Microsoft in the Caribbean. They gave us an office to hold this training event. We invited a bunch of schools, um, universities. I think the University of Puerto Rico was there, um, and librarians. There was a librarian conference we were connected to that we were trying to work with. 
And in a snap, we had this fun, great event. There was food, there was um, networking, but there was also this wonderful training on Wikidata um, that he provided. And this is just the kind of thing this community does. It's people get together, they put our, we put our heads together, and we're about doing something. Um, and obviously, the, the goal is always um, collecting data, sharing data, um, presenting data to the world, you know, um, on whether it's Wikidata or Wikipedia, et cetera. We want to share with the world. But it's the, in, the enthusiasm of people. I think that's one of the reasons why this is, I think, the largest uh, group of volunteers in the world is the Wiki community because people are just so passionate about information and they want to find be innovative creative about ways to do it and one of the ways we were able to do that is because we wanted to and people because people like to eat food because we had food <laughs> i think with donuts and coffee whatever but also because you know um people were willing to get online um there were volunteers in new york and i think we had another in the in the caribbean who are online in a Zoom kind of like this, um, connecting with people in that office in Puerto Rico to, you know, train people and um, and obviously the work, the the willingness of partners outside of the Wikimedia community, um, like Microsoft was that day to work with us, um, is also a boon. So I think Wiki, the Wiki community is a perfect storm, and I think it's something that the world really could use right now, and that's one of the reasons why people go to Wikipedia more than any other site for information concerning COVID-19 because there's a trust that's been built up over the years of the information that this community is uh, providing. So that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah. We're, we're getting close to the, the end of the hour and I, I want to make sure everyone has a chance to talk about where you, you're planning to go from here with your projects and how people can connect with you. Uh, I, I wanted to ask a quick one qu question though of, of Pete. I just, I'm just curious, have you had experiences with any of the articles you've created about newspapers being uh, like taken over or mimicked by people who are trying to inject uh, <laughs> false information into Wikipedia and have you had to have have you had to deal with that or I, I guess I should ask that question of, of all three of you um, because that you know if, if the goal is to create trusted information we have to deal with the people who are trying to right to push their their propaganda yeah so I would say I mean certainly over my years as a Wikipedia editor I've encountered many instances of that uh, with newspapers I would say I've encountered much less of it uh, than I might expect. And really the only, the only instances that come to mind are pretty innocuous ones, are, are where, um, you know, the editor or owner of a newspaper or, you know, just someone associated with it might come and, you know, like in a, in a, in a straightforward case, they're just updating um, the basic information about, you know, that it says that the owner is so-and-so, well, it was bought a year or two ago, that's not reflected, so they're adding. So that's actually, that's worthwhile to do, although Wikipedia's policy uh, would require them to clearly disclose that they work for the newspaper if they're doing that. Uh, so sometimes they're not aware of that. In, in other cases, they might actually be, you know, maybe there's a, a section about a scandal or about a, you know, a story that they had to retract or something. And so they might try to remove that. But Wikipedia's processes are, are fairly robust in catching that and someone will notice it and someone will address it appropriately, either undo what they did or engage them in discussion. Um, you know, it's not a perfect process, but it tends to work fairly well. Uh, and, you know, I personally, I just, I just enjoy being a part of it. And, uh, and you know, I, I, I typically see something like that usually as an opportunity to engage in dialogue with someone who's interesting and brings something to the table, even if they're not doing it the right way the first time around. Other people are a little more reactive about it, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a diverse community and we all have our own approach. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we do it through edit-a-thons. We, we want to, we have had, Africa Crowd has, had at least one event every month since I've been a part of it for since 2015. Um, and 
so in each event, we try to um, offer a training. And um, so it's where we, we like to think of ourselves kind of like a welcoming committee for people um, to Wikipedia, especially people of African descent. Um, and um, we want to make sure they have the tools that they need to get started and also know what to expect. It's not always successful, but over the years, we've had many people who have not only started their Wikipedia journey or their Wiki community journey um, uh, with us, but they've also continued on and become organizers and um, even uh, speakers and so forth themselves. So um, that's something we're very proud of. Mm -hmm. So why don't we wrap up by having each of you talk a little bit about where you want to take your project from here. Uh, how people can help and it maybe provide uh, a way that people can can get in touch with if you if they want to if they want to follow up. Um, Stephen, would you like to go first? Sure. Uh, so, uh, Peace Track, as I mentioned, is an open source project. It is up on GitHub. We can put a link to the uh, GitHub repository in the description of this video. So um, I would love to hear from people who are organizing campaigns on Wikipedia about features that they may want to see or use in a, in a tool like, um, like Pastetrack. And, uh, you know, I'd also love any contributions from uh, software development oriented people who are uh, also interested in donating their time to uh, improving Wikipedia campaigns. Thank you. And uh, Pete? Yeah, so uh, so the News on Wiki project or campaign is uh, we're we're looking to enter a second phase of this, as I mentioned before. So um, shortly, we we expect to be announcing um, a, a phase where we'll be focusing. Actually, this time we're we're hoping to focus on some more specific areas. So specifically, uh, so Sherry is working with me on the campaign. I don't know if we mentioned that because you were talking about some of your other excellent projects. Um, so Sherry is bringing her connections with uh, with AfroCrowd and the Wiki Wikipedians of the Carib Caribbean. Um, so we're going to focus on Black-owned newspapers and Caribbean-focused newspapers, many of which are based in the U.S. but are for Caribbean communities. Um, and also uh, the state of Washington or the northwestern U.S. so that we can kind of focus on a, a smaller area and really demonstrate what it looks like to make a, a bigger impact rather than having our several hundred articles be all over the US. Uh, so we're hoping to have a second phase shortly. If people are interested, regardless, the best place to engage with us is on Wiki Project newspapers. Uh, I will put the link in the chat here and I'll also, um, when we post this on YouTube, I'll be sure the link is there as well. So that's a Wiki Project page that has its own talk page. And so regardless of whether we're in an active campaign or not, that's a good place to find people who are interested in that work. And you could also contact me directly and I'll, I'll put that link up as well. Okay, great. And Sherry? Hi, yeah. So um, for the Wiki check-in, I was gonna say you can contact me, Sherry at Afropro.org. You know, that's a, a good way to do it. But the way I really want people to connect is um, go to the Wiki check-in page and um, you can leave a, something on the talk page or um, you can also connect with us. Um, just, I, I invite you to DM us <laughs> um, I'll, and I'll definitely be reading it. Um, just uh, find us on, on uh, online. We are um, at AfroCrowd on, uh, on Facebook and Instagram. And on Twitter, it's Afrocrowd IT. But uh, you can direct line me to at Sherry and at Afrocrowd.org. But I think all of that is also on the uh, the web page for today's event too. Okay. Well, great. Thank you very much. It's really an honor to. Oh, uh, oh sorry, I forgot one more thing. Hashtag Wiki check in. Okay. So if uh, wherever you are, just hashtag wiki check-in and um and it'll give you uh, a lot of great information about it as well great thank you um i just wanted to, to say it's really been uh, i've found this personally informative and it's really just a pleasure to to be able to talk with people who are doing uh, some very exciting projects that are 
geared towards bettering our human community. So uh, thank you very much, all three of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. It was Thanks. nice meeting my co-panelists. <laughs> Too. All right. And thanks to our audience. And, uh, and we will have this posted on YouTube uh, within the next week. And so watch our Twitter feeds or the Open Publishing Fest for more information. Uh, I think my, my Twitter feed is at Pete Forsyth, and I'll certainly be posting it there. Be well, everybody. Okay. Okay. So